In High School Musical 2, it's finally summer vacation, and that means the kids of East High get to say goodbye schoolwork and hello regular work. Because in America, if you're not making money or going into debt by age 18, then you might as well be a worthless dirt baby with no arms and no legs rolling around in a mushroom field somewhere. Not our wildcats. Scar. HSM 2 is one of those rare sequels that actually manages to improve upon the original with its bigger budget and expanded story, and Disney Channel put that extra money right where it matters, into creating better songs, more extravagant set pieces, and procuring a collection of hats that would make the kid from Modern Family lose his mind. But things aren't all perfect, as the novelty starts to wear off for our golden boy Troy Bolton, for pretty much anyone who isn't a basketball-obsessed dad. Will the Wildcats still be all in this together after a summer full of emotional poolside conversations, staggered dance formations, and fast walking through golf courses? There's only one way to find out, in another high school music musical installment of Clip Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another Clip Breakdown featuring High School Musical. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such things, and we attack them with a chainsaw so that we sever them into little bloody pieces and look at them and put them on our mantle or whatever. Anyway, today I'm super excited to get into the second installment of the High School Musical franchise. You already know we did number one last week, and not only is this the most superior film out of the whole trilogy, but it's also full of nonsense, as one can only hope to expect from a Disney Channel original movie. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. It lets me know that you really want to see more of this type of content and it supports the channel. But most importantly, if you're new here, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. You'll also notice that I'm wearing my new Pride water bottle merch in the pullover hoodie, so you can check those things out in the link below. I've also been loving my water bottle bottle fanny pack. You can put your kombucha in there if you want. See? That's so normal. Oh, and no, your eyes do not deceive you. There is a new plant in the room with me. It's my new bamboo palm. I think she gives so much tropical feelings, and I'm really happy to have her. And you are too. So HSM 2 starts off by getting us all ready for the love fest that's about to happen, showing us some of the iconic locations of the previous film. Wow, we're paying so much reverence to East High, I almost confused this movie with another epic tale of adventure, romance, and coming of age. It's been 84 years, and I can still smell the fresh paint. The china had never been used. The sheets had never been slept in. Obviously, we had to go back to East High in Salt Lake City, Utah to shoot this sequel, but we only spent three days, we, as if I was anything to do with this movie. They only spent three days shooting on this location, and the rest of it was in a different part of Utah for the Lava Springs Resort that we'll see later. But I'm really glad that we have this scene at East High first, because uh, Ms. Darbus is nuts, and I need her in my life. Reflecting each golden moment. Dude. Miss Darvis has snapped her cap. Troy, you've been saying that about anyone who points out that you dyed your hair, okay? He said, no, I just got so into the role of Arnold in Twinkletown that my hair turned naturally chestnut like his. Um, all of the characters in this movie now look like they're pushing 30, and it's been one year. Jason, so what was your favorite summer memory, Miss Darvis? Oh. Well, it all started in 1940s South Carolina when I met a young mill worker named Noah, and he nailed me in a wet barn. Name that movie. I love Jason. He's probably one of my favorite supporting characters in High School Musical 2. I don't know why. I think when I was 15, I had a crush on him in the first movie. I was like, that one can be my boyfriend. He was like, no, I can't. Obviously, the kids are super anxious because summer vacation just can't start soon enough. Was that summer. unforgettable summer of dinner summer. theater where I was the summer. summer. The summer. Summer. Season. Summer. Summer. The new kid's like, hey, why are we all telling that guy what season it is? Well, he's kind of our high school king because his bootcut jeans are the bootiest. The kids of East High start us off strong because why? It's summertime. I love a school's out scene taking place in a high school. This is my ultimate dream. Clear them kids out, bring in a bunch of professional dancers. Let's improve my high school memories. 
I've hugged enough drama teachers to know you're gonna smell like white diamonds Elizabeth Taylor for the rest of the year now. Also, Chad, just don't force your lips on any teacher ever, unless it's to perform CPR, and even then make them round your grade up. Everybody's moving and grooving in the hallway. In the hallway, yeah, in the hallway. Every time they do this stuff, there's one kid just trying to get to class being like, excuse me, multicultural students, I'm trying to get to my homeroom. What time is it? Between all the acid wash jeans and the break dancing and dungarees, goodness, we gotta pour one out for the distressed denim on the set of High School Musical. Don't be slippery later. Talking to the water. I wonder how many pants related jokes I'm gonna make. <laughs> Literally, this song is so much fun. They're like dancing through the hallways and making a strong case for later start times for high schoolers. No more waking up at 6 a.m. We can sleep as late as we want to. It's these kids sound tired as hell. If they sold some Maybelline Dark Circle eraser in that school store, someone would make a killing. The kids of East High are having to enter the workforce in order to save up for college or whatever else they care about in their stupid, minuscule lives. My parents keep talking about how much college is gonna cost. I'm saving up for a car. So I can take that little hottie on a proper date. You can also buy her a matching necklace with a single bead that's resting perfectly within her neck dent. Both of your super sternal notches filled in the moonlight. If you recall our hip hopping nerd from the first movie, Martha, she was like, look at me and what do you see? She must have been a fan favorite. I know she was very memorable for me. I'm glad that they gave her a full role in this movie. I guess I'm back in the babysitting business. Hey Martha, hey Taylor. Hey, hey Gilts, what are you planning to do this summer? summer? Well, first I'm reestablishing your character name for the audience since you were just a featured soloist in the first movie. Troy has a special gesture for Gabriella to show that they're gonna have a great summer. Not Taylor acting like she just witnessed the miracle of birth when she saw that. She's like, oh, where there was once nothing, there is now a metal knuckle loss. Tease and Troy. Actually, that's a Greek symbol. You're in my fraternity now. Welcome to Tau Sigma Phi, brother. Throughout the whole movie, they do this thing where Troy and Gabriella are like about to kiss, but then someone interrupts them. It's iconic because like, just kiss, no one cares. Hey man, how's it going? There you go, boss. <laughs> There you go, boss. Since you're an extra, be careful not to say a single word. I'll fill the silence with the sound of my hands rubbing together. Go, boss. <laughs> Troy is talking about all the fun stuff they're gonna do this summer, and it includes every list of teenage stereotypes. You can go to the movies, download music. Oh, and I'm definitely teaching you a twisted flip on the skateboard. Downloading music is not an activity, Troy. This is what a twisted flip looks like on a skateboard, by the way, because I had to know what Troy was trying to teach Gabriella. If I was Gabrielle, I'd be like, yeah, uh, your house also has a pool, right? Real quick, they squeeze it in that Sharpay is hiring Kelsey to be their rehearsal pianist and whatever else kind of pianist they need at her country club for the summer. Of course, it wouldn't be a shooting location if we didn't get kids dancing in that exterior. I don't think we got this in the first movie, so I was really excited by like the big crowd numbers that they do in front of the school. They actually had to spray paint the grass green for this. It was all brown when they shot this. It was closer to winter. Summertime. What in the right L high was that? High School Musical 1 stole the story of Greece, and High School Musical 2 steals the music and the Capri pants. Back at the Bolton residence, the boys are just chilling out playing hoops. That sounded so phony coming out of my mouth, I'm sorry. <laughs> Me and the boys just doing boy things like peeing into buckets. So guys, how's the job hunt coming? Eh, the big zero. Someone's gotta be hiring Coach Bolton. Is there perhaps a small business opening up in your basketball shorts? <laughs> What is those pants, son? What is those pants? Troy gets a phone call and this kicks off some good news for our bro. Hey Troy, does Gabriella still remember your name or did she find somebody new to karaoke with this summer? <laughs> <laughs> good burn, Zeke. By the way, we had to abandon your plot line with Sharpay for this movie, but don't worry because we will be making your character into the help. I mean the chef, sorry. Disney execs, ooh. Imagine being a grown man in your own nice house and having a bunch of sweaty boys around and you're like, I'm just gonna start a scrimmage real quick around my kitchen island. Like, this dad does not act like he actually lives in his own house. 
Can we all redirect this energy by carrying in the groceries? Yes, yes Ms. Walton. Thank you for giving us your customary one line per movie, and this time you made it extra nagging. The director said, ooh, can we also give her snakes for hair? No, that's too much. I also think it's weird that she like throws the basketball into her own sink. Like, you wouldn't put a basketball in your kitchen sink that's been rolling around in dog poo. Sharpay and Ryan arrive at the Lava Springs Country Club, where Sharpay and Ryan have won the Star Dazzle Award at the end of the summer every year, forever, for like five years. That's like the talent show that they put on for their residents, but also the staff members get to perform too. I'm not saying that I'm like a member at any country clubs, but I've been to some and I don't see them ever putting on a talent show. People pay money to go here. It's not like a summer camp, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I wouldn't go. I know that. I don't care how earnest these kids are with their choral singing. I would be like, um, I'm fine. I'll be in the sauna. Cause I can already tell from in there, you all need to tighten up those harmonies. Okay. It's very clear from the beginning that Sharpay has this place wrapped around her finger. She's treated like a princess. Well, thanks to the kind words from your mother last season, I've been promoted. I'll make sure that the new lifeguard is fully briefed on just how you like things. The guy in the Rufio haircut is either being overdubbed with his voice or he genuinely talks like a computer game character. I'll make sure the lifeguard has things. Yes, don't you like that? Next up is one of my favorite songs in this whole number. It's called Fabulous. Even before this movie came out, they were playing all the soundtrack on Radio Disney uh, for like the whole year before it to promote the movie. And I had XM Sirius Satellite Radio in my car at the time. So I was listening to Radio Disney all the time when I was 16. Like I loved these songs, unironically. Still do. I loved listening to the production of them. I was like, Disney, you got your finger on the pulse of pop music production. Meanwhile, Ashley Tisdale's like, Me. This song is good though. Okay, let's watch it. Fetch me my Jimmy Choo flip flops. Where is my pink product tote? I need my Tiffany hairband. Then I can go for a flow. Whoa, whoa. Ooh, if you just name one more designer starter accessory, you'll finish your bingo card for 2007 aspirational brands. This song, my heart does, I love this song. I want fabulous, that is my simple request. I need fabulous. I want fabulous. This song fully embodies who I am. And yes, I fully acknowledge that it's mostly a white person screaming into a microphone, but that's who I am too. I want fabulous, that is my simple request. Only fabulous. I need something inspiring to help me get along. I need a little fabulous, is that so wrong? Love it. Okay, but apparently she doesn't get everything she wants because even though she had a little scheme to get Troy to spend the summer with her, it backfired. Not. Yeah. Whoa, that's the first time I've ever seen a character get knocked into a swimming pool by the movie's own clunky editing. Sharpay strutted over there and said, I'm gonna pull some focus. Let me throw myself into this chlorinated pool, mama. Sharpay goes up to Fulton, who's like the guy who runs the club, who she's always ordering around. And he's like, well, you told me to get Troy Bolton here no matter what. And the board of directors liked the idea of me hiring all of your classmates. That leads to the reveal that the board is actually Sharpay and Ryan's mom and dad. Mother, how could you? Think of your future, kid. These are your school chums, not the fuddy-duddy love of spring staff. Okay, except now they're both, mother. What kind of logic is that? Having classmates bring me my tuna melt is gonna be better for my future somehow? The screenplay really falls apart under inspection. Like, why are they here? What about my future? I'm, you know I'm a bitch. The mom doesn't seem to notice anything though. She's wearing pearls while she's doing yoga. So that just tells me a lot about her right there. So Sharpay has to come up with an alternate way to get what she wants, which is all of her classmates out of the picture. I want them out. If you can't fire them, make them want to quit. Fine, but if the whole staff quits, you're gonna be scraping your own hair extensions out of the shower drain. Chicken run? God, who's gonna work here if I fire everyone? Does he even care about staffing this place? This part is also kind of weird for me. Like, apparently Fulton is going in now intentionally trying to make this job seem hard so that the kids want to quit, but he doesn't. And all of the things that he does are basically things that would have had to have been planned before they even got there. So, I don't know, it seems this part doesn't work for me. Waiters, you'll handle member activities. Yeah. Piano, lunchtime, and cocktail hour. You will assist Chef Michael. And for those of you without defined character traits, your job will change frequently based on the color costume we want you to be wearing in the background. Immediately, all the kids of East High are having doubts about taking this job because it seems like it's gonna be really tough. Suddenly, I'm beginning to miss the tension with Ms. Darbus. Come on, we got a hoop out back. 
two free meals a day, and we only have to wear these stupid outfits on duty. It's weird that Troy even has to defend all of these jobs that he got you without interviews that perfectly align with your skills and interests. Kelsey's a professional musician now. Zeke is an assistant chef. The smart girl gets to hold a clipboard. You should be thanking him. Chad is particularly aggressive about this, like as usual. In the last video, I said that he wants to sleep with a hollowed out basketball, and someone hilariously commented that all basketballs are hollow. I got a basketball full of piss under my bed that begs to differ. Um, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Again, I feel like it's weird they're all like complaining about these jobs when they didn't have any jobs to begin with. I don't know what they were all expecting to do with their summer if not working at this cool country club where you, they, they get free meals even. It's a good job. Like I used to know kids who worked at country clubs in the summer and they seem to really love it. How did we get from the top of the world to the bottom of the heap? I don't recall you mentioning the boss is such a creep. Uh, to be fair, he only really asked you guys to all clock in on time and not hurt yourselves. Are we all clear on what jobs are before we start? I think they could have really made this a better story point. Like, I wish that all the kids were for some reason forced to work. Like, if we had started that summer vacation song where they were all talking about the relaxation they were gonna have, the fun stuff, the playing basketball, and no work in sight. But instead, they were all like, I gotta get a job. That's why it feels so weird that they're instantly like, wait, now we have to work at these jobs? I get that they're trying to make it seem like it's because Fulton is making their lives miserable, but he didn't describe anything that would be outside of their normal duties anyway. So for me, their, their motivations just flip too easily. What I wish they could have done is like, oh, they leave school, they're all excited for summer vacation, and then, I don't know, Troy and his friends are playing basketball, but then something happens while they're playing basketball and they like knock over scaffolding of paint onto Troy's dad's car. Or it could have been back at the school right after the school's out thing and they like mess up and they somehow damage Miss Darvis's car by a basketball accident. Now they're all on the hook to pay for the damage or whatever or they're not going to be able to play on the basketball team next year and they need to be on their basketball team to finish their senior year strong. So as a team they all have to come up with like, I don't know, $5,000 or whatever in the summer. I would be so into that because then I as a viewer would feel the disappointment of being like, summer vacation? Oh, now we have to work? And then Sharpay can be like, Troy, I heard you needed a job. I've got just the thing. And then he's like, perfect. I'm bringing all my friends too. And she's like, what? That would get us to the same exact place, but it also would feel more like, I guess I say it all the time, but the stakes would be higher. I need the stakes to be higher. The next song we go into is called Work It Out, which was actually the first scene that they shot uh, during this production. And I can really see that the budget improved here. They shot this number at like a higher frame rate so that you get all of the dance moves really clear. You don't have as much motion blur. It's a move you'll constantly see done for music videos. You'll see it for dance numbers in movies like Step Up. It makes dance look a lot crisper and cleaner, but you usually have to bump up the lights like a lot to expose the camera properly. So it's not something they do usually for a full movie unless they can be in like a tight studio setting. What have you gotten us into? I'd rather face a seven footer straight up in the post. That sure beats hanging here and burning someone's toast. Uh -huh. Well, that person didn't even want their toast burnt. So how do you think they feel? Martha, at the beginning of this movie, you said you could couldn't get hired shoveling sh out of an outhouse and now you're mad about being a chef? Like, look at yourself. And don't forget, you will get paid at the end of all this. This is not forced labor. Another reason I would have loved if this money was all like to pay off some debt as a team because then it's like, they're not even getting the money they put into all of this. They have to give it right to Coach Darbus or whatever. That being said, I love the dance number in this. They're all like Oof, doing this with their feet. <laughs> We really want the summer to be a success for Troy and Gabriella and their relationship. And if it's not, I will literally swim into the ocean. I've never been in one place for an entire summer. And this means a lot to me. I want to remember this summer, Troy. And that means no more recreational ketamine. It's been really hard to scrape the dried crust out of my hair in the morning. Sharpay, in her, all of her mischievous mischief, turns on the sprinklers to get them lovey doveyness off of the field, okay? Look out for this really bad ADR where they overdub Zac Efron's voice. I think probably because all the sprinklers are making too much noise to actually record audio, so they just re-recorded all those sounds. May I have this dance? Why, of course you may. You are gonna get so wet! <laughs> Uh, yeah! Woo! The only thing worse than this dialogue is knowing that Zac Efron recorded it while standing in a sound booth. You are gonna get so wet! Ah! 
It isn't long before Fulton comes on the court and is like, you guys should not be on the golf course. You know that that's a rule. If it ain't the dead of night, you don't come out of those slave quarters. So it's their first strike out of a three strike system that I guess exists here. Not a really official way of tracking your employee performance, but sure. Kelsey grabs a hold of Troy and Gabriella and she's like, yo, I'm writing you a special jam for this talent show. I'm so excited about the club's talent show. I mean, the employees get to do a number. You guys can sing the lead. Maybe Zeke and Chad could do backup. And Big time out on that one. Uh, my singing career began and ended with the East High Winter Musical. Troy, it was called Twinkle Town. Say her name. Especially when you're talking to the composer of the show. Put some respect on that name. Kelsey Daniels or whatever your last name is. Respect. But regardless, Kelsey is able to show them the song. You know the words once upon a time make you listen. There's a reason. Gabriella's like, wait, I'm just curious. Are you like trying to be a singer now too or something I'm just wondering also scrap this whole movie and give Kelsey an album I love her little line here at the beginning for some reason her voice just sounds so authentic and innocent I'm like I love you Kelsey you're my girl even when this song used to come on on Radio Disney that was the best part of the line I was like na 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 hey I'm the girl who plays piano this song though then I hear my favorite song I know that we belong you are music give me Kelsey's like, ooh, this is just how it was in my dream, except both of you were giant newsboy caps. You are the music in me, oh, I love this song. It gives me anxiety to know that an entire camera crew let this man flail bombastically with his underwear out. I've never seen an American Eagle belt doing such miracles. Yeah, just show us your striped underwear. That's fun for the whole class. Now if I met a man who was wearing boxer shorts, I would literally get on a spaceship and fly to the moon. Of course, this music gets all the other junior staff members into the room too. <laughs> When I used to be in plays, there was no more fun way to steal a scene than enthusiastically saying, come on, to the group that you're already a part of. Whoa, come on, guys, here, me first, I found this, come on. Because the cast has obviously known each other for a while, uh, they really get to improvise and show their personality in a few more scenes during High School Musical 2. How should we get to the food today, sir? Hmm, I don't know. Perhaps skipping. Ah, oh, very well then, hmm, shall we? Yep, Oh, I can tell that you guys are really having fun here, but it's not working for me. It's not. Zach, we didn't hire you back here for your improv comedy skills, okay? We did it because your face tests well with 10 year olds picking a backpack out at Walmart. The shenanigans continue, however. Fulton is like, you guys are gonna be caddies today. You're caddying today. $40 a bag. You've been requested. What? By who? So who cares? For 40 bucks? A caddy for Godzilla. An 18 hole game of golf takes like six hours. So 40 bucks, you're making like 650 an hour. I know how long golf games typically last from cheating on past boyfriends. Of course, it's no surprise that Troy and Troy's friend are both being asked to caddy for Sharpay and her family. So we get to meet all of them. It's kooky. Sharpay's dad like lands in on a helicopter. He's a big deal, total silver daddy type of deal. Oops, sometimes I just keep letting words come out and I don't let my teeth stop them. What do you think? Well, it's 190 to the pin, downhill lie, elevated green. I'd go with a full five, sir. Oh, suddenly Troy is good at golf now, too, everybody. He's good at every single sport that's ever existed, and he's dating a shy girl. It's like this boy was genetically engineered in a lab to instill a sense of fatherly pride in white people. I will say, though, watching the Evans family, like, delusionally play golf is really entertaining. Backboard. Yes! yes! Where I have no idea. Sharpay's family ignoring all the rules of golf is me cheating at board games so that they end faster. I'm eating saltwater taffy for breakfast. Mm. When you grew up in New England, that counts as real food. Okay. Obviously, Troy and Chad are not super thrilled after having to spend a whole day catering to the Sharpay family or whatever their name is. The next time I see Country Club Princess, I'm gonna launch her and her pink cart straight into the lake. I'll build the ramp, buddy. Oh, in the meantime, do you think you could come shed some of your barefoot skin cells on this food I'm plating over here? Thanks, 
guys. Really great having you in the kitchen. Na 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 na, hey. I'm eating skin from your feet. <laughs> Kelsey's only rule about hats is that you can never put them on all the way. She said, what will go nicely with this white blouse? Hmm, a lime green train conductor hat with Benjamin Franklin glasses. Hi, I'm just here to play your piano music. A doo bit doo. Some soft music for you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kelsey and I'm here to say choo 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 hooray. Oh, look at this. Look at this new leaf. Can you see it? Cause it's greener. That leaf is baby new. That leaf is baby new. Troy gets invited to a fancy dinner with the Sharpays family and some other big wigs in the basketball community. The college Albuquerque toppy doppy basketball kanaki. That's like literally the garbled gook that they keep saying in this piece. Uh, I saw your championship game. I mean, wow. That last second shot at the buzzer. Actually, my teammates here stole the ball. That guy's face was like, wait, what did that black guy steal from you? Apparently, Troy needs like a scholarship so bad. Like he needs it so bad. We've got a heck of a basketball program over U of A and an excellent scholarship program as well. Yeah. Um, you know, between the two of us here, we, uh, we pull a little weight over at the school. Ugh, the level of straight male bravado in this scene is giving me colitis. Men like you need to stop smirking, just eat your grilled chicken breast and avoid getting prostate cancer until you die. That's the only thing we ask. Don't add words to the whole conversation. We've heard from you in the past and it's bullshit. Apparently being at this fancy schmancy dinner made Troy late for this date that he and Gabriella had. Taylor is the only one who sees what's coming from a mile away. She's the only one looking out for Gabriella. Two minutes is being late, but an hour is approaching a felony. Just because Troy's a nice guy doesn't mean he's immune to boy disease. Boy disease? Yes, Gabriella, we were just talking about this with Sharpay's dad. Get in there and check Troy's prostate. Get in there, be a trooper. This next number is really long. Like it's too long. Girls, it's long. And it's actually not a scene that many of you may have scene because it's from uh, the extended version of this movie. Sharpay and Ryan rope Troy into some mm, Hawaiian inspired performance. Between this and Bop to the Top in the last movie where they were speaking Spanish, it seems like Ryan and Sharpay really have a hard time not appropriating other cultures for their little tacky numbers. My sweet prince, <laughs> That was fully Emma Stone's performance as a native Hawaiian character in Aloha. She said, pineapple pizza and a pina colada. Come on. Troy seems like determined to have Gabriella break all the rules of this club and get in trouble. They're not supposed to be in the pool. Hey, life guard! Ah. <laughs> no, we're not supposed to be in the pool. Crap! I need a life guard. <laughs> Both their bodies were discovered at 7.53 a.m. That's why you don't drink and swim, kids. No, I'm just kidding. They survive because they don't drink. They're pure. They haven't even kissed yet. They try, but they get in trouble right before they can. Okay, one thing we're not gonna do is have you shush me when I wasn't even talking. Thanks, Troy. Why don't you just go in for that weak ass kiss like you were about to? Mr. Fulton, this was my idea. She had nothing to do with it. Two strikes. Don't get a third. Troy, that's a really lame excuse. How does she have nothing to do with it? There's only two people in the pool and she's half of them. So she has something to do with it. What are you, forcing her into the pool now? You're drowning this young woman? Do we need to call the cops? Get your story straight. I'm very inflammatory with these people. I'm ready to make a scene. I'm like, hello, the devil. We've got some kids here fornicating. Troy is talking with his dad who has some more shaky advice for him while they do more man activities. Oh, you want to hold a wrench with me, son? We'll pump some gas into the oil tank. Also, tell me why Troy Bolton would have a basketball in the hood of the car right now. And they were talking about scholarships while Jason and Chad were like serving me. Getting paid for it? It's called a job. You're invited. Nothing wrong with that. I love that you got the team working together. But you're not going to be Wildcat forever. Team is now, but everybody's got their own future. I'm not sure I know what you mean. Oh, sorry, let me re-explain it. High school basketball sucks and it doesn't matter. Hmm? Also, big swing from Coach Bolton. Last year he was all like, it's all about the team. If you're not on the team, the team goes to hell. Now all of a sudden when it's time to start enriching yourself so that you can bring him his own little carbon copies of you that he can kick around at Christmas, it's all about yourself. Ignore those kids on your team. You gotta get into college. I see how it is. I see how it is. This is how the Boltons got how rich and successful they are in Albuquerque. Climbing over the little guy, shedding friends like dead skin in the feet kitchen. Oh, I'm really touching everything now, aren't I, for plants? Sorry. Mwah. 
You guys, you know what's fun? Real quick. Right after I shot my last video, I sadly knocked over the aloe plant. I know. And I lost one of these fronds, but now I have fresh aloe juice. I love to put my teeth on it. Anyway, the next morning, Troy is in for a major surprise from Fulton. I'm promoting you. So you want me to teach golf? To kids. The board is extending membership privileges to you. Great, can you also ask the board to do something about the signage around here? You can't use papyrus and then charge $80 for a massage. This was shot on location at a real country club so that's a real sign they really use papyrus around this place that's such an early thousands thing to do because he's like apparently now both a employee and a customer of this country club he gets like a locker full of free clothes and golf clubs and things like that they basically spoil him with all this fancy crap and he starts being a golf teacher for the children of the curse of the cures Wah, nice backswing man good job killer make the ball fear you you look good. Couldn't think of a funny thing for the third girl. Um, good standing there, Brittany. In addition to coaching the kids, Troy is also coaching adult Sharpe, so that's a thing. You look fabulous in your new clothes, by the way. Oh, <laughs> you like the shoes? They're Italian. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Troy can handle himself. I did overhear him asking her for her opinion on his new Italian golf shoes. He didn't ask me. Well, to be fair, he just thought you wouldn't care about those Italian golf shoes, Gabriella, because you're so tacky and poor. That's what's causing this emotional infidelity. If you weren't so bland and you knew something about shoes, then you could help Troy become the fashion killer that he's meant to be, okay? Literally the same day that Troy gets some free golf clubs and a free polo, he, he like starts acting completely different. Okay. You gotta hold it just right. right. Ooh, okay. that looks great. Hey, I almost forgot. I ordered Swiss on my burger. Oh, of course. I'll be sure to dunk that in dishwater first, just how I know you like it, Troy. Does this man have x-ray cheese vision? He literally lowered his eyes and was like, oh, there's no Swiss on that, you dumbass. The whole gang is kind of depressed. They're like, we don't know who that guy is anymore because this morning he asked for a sandwich from me when I was his waiter. Like, you know. Troy is being a jerk though. It's very clear. Like, I actually don't understand how Troy would be so inconsiderate all of a sudden. Like, literally two nights ago, he said it was weird for the guys to be serving him and the dad was like, okay, but just focus on your future too. He didn't say, well then be mean to them. Be mean to them. Be meaner to your friends. That's what I think. Sequels always do this where it's like, oh, the, the main character from the last movie changes for the worse or he gets famous and his personality changes for the movie. Like that's the conflict. I hate it. I think it's really unoriginal. And like, if you want to show me a different side of a character that I haven't seen before, make it a different endearing quality, not like him being a jerk. Cause then we really only get like two minutes of redemption at the end of the movie. It's boring. Uh, that new duet that Trang Gabriella sing? I need it. Actually, it's not available. You're an employee, not a fairy godmother. Let's have it. It's unrealistic that Sharpay would show such a flagrant disregard for intellectual property rights. Disney Plus would use those very same laws to steal all of the profit from this very video review if they could. Kelsey's like, um, I registered that song with ASCAP, so you'll be hearing from my lawyer. Meanwhile, Troy is in like this real us or them situation between the Wildcats and the Albuquerque Cool Kids or whatever the Roosters, I think is the name of the college basketball team that's courting Troy right now. He gets invited to their practice and he's like, um, I got a Bail. Hey, hey, Fulton, come on. Hey, why don't you tell him to come over here and mix it up? We'll show him some game. <sighs> you know, uh, I don't think that's how they roll. You mean they don't do sharp athletic dance moves during their practice and sing and stuff? How do they sell tracks on iTunes? Ryan is also feeling a little excluded because Sharpay basically pushed him out of the show to do a number with, of course, Troy. So he's walking around and he runs by Kelsey and what's her name and what's her girl, Gabriella, Gamadudu, Gobadubi, uh, the whole gang of Candyland. So they invite Ryan to an all staff baseball game where Gabriella has an idea. I don't to put together a show. No. But he does. If we have a real director putting it together, it could be great. If you want to play ball, then grab a mitt. But I don't dance. That's an odd thing to say, Chad, because I would argue that you dance more than most people at this school. Just this past year, you were break dancing on a lunch tray at some point. Ryan's like, what? You don't think dancing takes some game? I got a little game. So they get into it. They start playing baseball. Yeah, the sacred touching of the baseball stick. Crowd favorite. Listen, I don't know enough about baseball to understand what this tradition is, so it's making me panicky and we're just gonna move on. Also, people in the comments are gonna tell me what it is. I get that it's probably like, whose turn is it to bat first? The person whose hand gets there. But that's a part of baseball. They should put it on TV, put it on the television so that I can watch the fun part. Cause I don't like the running around, but if there was a dramatic stick handling moment, I might've been a baseball fan earlier. This whole song is called, I don't dance. I don't dance, no. Back, 
Shake it in, take it in. I love anything where the whole crowd is moving in motion. They're like, Skamba, shake it out, do that thing. A scooby doo ba dee ba dee ba doo doo Love it. Moving in tandem, that's fun. When a whole crowd is moving at once, it's like, we're living in a musical. Being in a musical is the only way to live. If I lived in a musical, my name would be Ricky, and I would be a baker, and I would be falling in love with a magical toy maker. Okay, I'm not saying I have all the ideas yet, but we're working it out. Keep workshopping that idea with me and we'll get there. This will be up and running by next year. Chad continues to tell lies right to my face throughout this whole song. I don't dance, no. Nothing to it. Attaboy, attaboy. Girl, this song is so out of control. They were like, not only will it be about them dancing and playing baseball at the same time, but it will also be a hip hop swing mashup with some jazzy elements and some scatting involved. Is that cool for everyone? And at one point, they'll all pick up handfuls of dirt and throw them. Are we on the same page? Cool. This movie's an hour and 45 minutes long, but I guess they're playing baseball now. That's a whole plot point. Give me one plot point that's not about everyone playing every sport ever. This was so unrelatable to my high school experience. If they had gone with my idea, they could have use this time to be like going to paint the school or fix their damage or whatever and uh ryan comes along and helps them and they have a whole painting montage where they dance that would have been fun too it's my movie now i am the captain even though they don't really play like real baseball they just kind of dance around the bases apparently ryan is a good baseball player based on that hey evans i'm not saying i'm gonna dance at the show if i did what would you have me do It's okay, you can answer that later when we're trying on each other's clothes. Meanwhile, at the college practice, Troy is impressing everybody. I don't know why the dad is even here for this. I like what I'm seeing. Troy gives 110, 24, 7. 365 days a year, even when he's watching 60 minutes or the first 48. 525,600 minutes, how do you measure the year in a life? Also, if we get one more scene of two adult men talking about sports they can no longer play, this whole movie can be sponsored by Lipitor. So sick of seeing guys in hats and jeans being like, oh, that guy over there, he's the hottest on the field. He's got rubber soles that'll walk up the highway and take it down the track to the max side. And then he's gonna put his finger up my butt and wiggle it around. Like, what? What are you talking about? Stop. After the baseball game, as I said, we've got Chad and Ryan inexplicably wearing each other's clothes. Don't know what that is. And this whole dialogue, like, I don't like it. So you call that a little game? Little League World Series, Newport, Rhode Island. Champions. <laughs> the kid on the right is enjoying the hell out of that soda, honey. Brush your teeth tonight, though. They need to rework this whole joke. Basically, Chad is like, you said you had a little game? And he's like, little league champion, Newport, Rhode Island, champions. Like, it's so disjointed. I think they were trying to be like, you, you call that a little game? Mm, little league champions, Newport, Rhode Island, 2005 is what I meant. That's kind of the joke, but it just wasn't properly directed or delivered. Don't know. Maybe it's my fault for wanting to understand the humor of the joke. That's probably on me. The next morning, it, they're trying to purvey that Ryan is all in as a wildcat. He's like gonna be directing the show. He loves all the little people now. Looking good. Wow, wildcat. Too much? Um. Do you have chlorine burns on your eyeballs? He's wearing basically the same thing as you. They were trying to make it sound like, whoa, you're wearing a ton of wildcat garb, but he's basically wearing a white shirt and a red bathing suit. It would have sold the joke more for me if he showed up wearing like that basketball outfit they all wear, like the track suit with the red pants and the wildcat logo all over it. Then it would have been like, oh, he's like trying really hard to be a wildcat right now, which is clearly what the joke was, but not what the costume designer didn't get the memo. All right. This is where we get a hint at this little love triangle thing that happens, which for me is just very unconvincing because in my mind, Ryan is gay. I see this as like Ryan and Gabriella becoming best friends uh, because Troy is like off doing things. I've also had girls' straight boyfriends get jealous of my friendship with their girlfriend because it's like, why do you get to wax her pubic hairs and I don't? Like, calm down. Well, you missed out on a fun night. It's very gay. But the dessert afterwards had to be the best part. Her mom makes the best brownies in the entire world. Yeah, I know. I've had them. Gabrielle's mom is like, they're just from a box, you guys. Chill out. I forgot to mention it, but at some point, Troy promised Sharpay that he would sing with her in the talent show. Basically, just to like get the scholarship that he's aiming for. She kind of made him promise. So now they have to rehearse for that song that she stole from Kelsey. I know I promised I'd do this, but just take it easy on me. I'm kind of new to the whole performing thing. Five, six, seven, eight. Na, 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 na. Ah, 
the grand high school musical tradition of giving us two versions of the same song with different tempos. It's thrilling and I don't fast forward through these numbers at all. Fun fact, this one was the last scene they shot of the whole movie with the pyrotechnics, probably why they saved it for last. The next day, Troy is feeding the children with his shirtless basketball playing. He's like, I'm just gonna take my shirt off and shoot some hoops in my khakis. We get it, after the first movie, you found a personal trainer. That's fun for you. Your fans are all 12 years old. Just a reminder, anyone who's seeing that body that you work so hard on is pre-sexual, so. Troy hears that the staff is like rehearsing for their number, so he wants to go see what's up. <laughs> Troy, you spend so much time sneaking around in doorways during these movies. That can't be easier than just telling your friends you're bisexual or whatever the issue is. Sharpay's not happy about what Ryan's doing either. I said keep an eye on them, not turn them into the cast of Grease. When did you become one of them? You're walking around smiling with tan lines like you're some sort of pool boy or something. This was clearly towards the end of the shooting schedule because the tan lines are real on these people. Sharpay takes a dramatic step at this point to get those staff members out of the show. So she tells Fulton like, we need all of these staff members working. We're gonna have important people in the audience. They can't be in the show. And he's like, are you sure you wanna do that? She's like, literally look at the beads that I'm wearing and ask me whether you think I'm thinking this through or not. They're made of plastic. Poor Fulton, he's so stressed being ordered around. Deep down, he just wants the kids to have fun too. It's like, don't you also need people to clean out the pool or whatever? Sometimes we have to perform tasks, however unpleasant, for that all too important paycheck to land in our all too empty pockets. May I get you a cup of tea? Mr. Fulton. Aw, making someone tea is such a loving gesture. I will always say yes to a cup of tea. When Gabriella finds out that Sharpay has made it so that no one can perform, she's ready to tell her off. You've got him written up by Fulton for sneaking on the golf course, swimming after hours. I had to step in just to save Troy's job. I'm not interested in what you think you're doing for Troy. That's between you and him. Vanessa Hutchins' hand gestures got their own agent after this scene. She ate that up. She said, hey, you with your blonde hair and your wiry chicken arms can f off. You don't like the fact that I won. What's the prize? Troy? The Star Dazzle Award? You have to go through all of this just to get either one? You're very good at a game that I don't want to play. Seriously, Sharpay, you're putting in a lot of effort for someone who's like one torn ACL away from working in windshield repair for the rest of his life. Think it through. This is like a song I can barely take. It's called Gotta Go My Own Way, and it's basically Gabriella breaking up with Troy and being like, I gotta leave, like this is not what I want, it's not what's right for me, peace. And it's actually a really effective breakup song, I feel. Like, sadness of it comes through, the longing really comes through. Through. I'm here for it. What am I supposed to do? I gotta leave, but I miss you. I got to move on and be who I am. Why do you have to go? And Troy's like, good thing I'm a wrestler too. Body lock. My love will crush your female bones. Gotta go my own way. So sad when she walks away and gets in her mom's car. I gotta go my own way. That's me at age 22, leaving my friends at the bar to meet some guy who doesn't like me back. And the Uber driver's like, are you Nicholas? And I'm like, yeah, I think I finally am. The next morning, everyone is giving Troy the silent treatment, but Kelsey is the empathetic one who slides Troy the memo and is like, mm, you ruined us, thanks jerk. But that gives Troy the confidence he needs to say, I'm gonna crumble this thing up. <gasps> no one tells my friends they can't be in a talent show. And that's where we get this song called Bet On It, which is great. Did you Zach, do you think we need to give you more to do in this scene than just like strut through a series of fields? No way, man. I've been training for months observing chickens and peacocks. I know how they walk. I know how they move. I know how they live. IMDB said this scene took six days to film and I'm like, uh, okay. Did we have to drive to a lot of different golf courses to get the best mountain views? Cause there, there's nothing going on here. There are times when he has nothing to do but walk around like theatrically. He's like, oh, he's acting like David Copperfield out here. In this game, if I can't play, Okay, Troy, that's enough playing Power Rangers for one night. Come on in and wash your hands for dinner. This whole number is supposed to be Troy's like coming to the light moment where he's like, I have been the wrong kind of friend and I'm not gonna stand for it anymore. And you can tell he's really introspective because he looks at his reflection in some water. To see yourself and not recognize your face. It's such a scary place. Ooh. He lives in you. Simba. 
there's something very 80s music video about this superimposed reflection, and they were like, yeah, that's what we're gonna do here. And everybody knows today is the day. Oh, something really weird happened that I felt the air shift in my body. I became Troy and Gabriella. We have a baby. Anyway, after Troy is done with his indignant frolicking, he's able to, I guess, go on to the next phase of his plan, but he had to run through this field first. I think what I love about this song is how there's absolutely nothing going on in it. They just tried to make Troy look cool for three minutes. Minutes. Like ideally a song in a musical would push the plot forward It wouldn't just be something a person is saying while they're on their way to a next location If this was supposed to be Troy rejecting all of the nice stuff that Sharpay is giving him I don't think he should have just been walking through a field and looking in a river or whatever He could have been like taking his golf clubs and dropping them back off at the locker Taking off all of his fancy clothes and putting it in a trash bag turning in his key to the locker make me feel it real But instead he's just like Whew. That is legitimately how I look when I'm running down Sunset Boulevard and a Nicki Minaj song comes on. Also, I just had a recovered memory that this song was playing on my satellite radio when I got into my very first fender bender and I cried. My aviator sunglasses came flying right off. Ah, rattled me. <laughs> And then I was like, not now, Troy. I've got to deal with this angry man whose mother I injured. So yeah, that song could have been a lot more of something to look at. <laughs> it just was nothing. And the IMDb said it took so long to shoot. I'm like, how? But Troy arrives at the next scene and he tells Sharpay that he just did all of this stuff that he didn't do. He's like, I asked for my old job back. What do you mean you're not doing the show? I don't like the way you've been treating my friends. And I don't like the way I've been treating him either. So I'm doing something about it. An entire table of university boosters are coming to see you. This could change your life. I'm a Caucasian upper middle class man, Sharpay. A college would let me in if I was carrying a machine gun, but I'll only get a few chances in my life to be an honest to God white savior and I'm taking it. He's like, oh, I gave up all of the clothes. I asked my old job back. Why couldn't we have at least seen that during the song? It makes me mad. Back in the kitchen, all of Troy's friends forgive him. So they're all like, welcome back to the fold, man. Meanwhile, we see other people acting on the stage which is pretty funny. Well, the only thing that would make it any lovelier would be if I won that Star Dazzle Award. Sharpay, I'm going to find you. Sock puppet lady threatening Sharpay's life is the moment. It is who we all are. How's your show going? How's it going? My show makes the captor Titanic look like he won the lottery. <laughs> yeah, that idiot who drowned with thousands of other innocent people. So Troy kind of smooths things over. He's like, hey, let's get out there and sing. I'm gonna help you out. And I want the other kids to sing too, or whatever, I think is what he says. But then there's some other stuff going on behind the scenes. Also, just look at Kelsey's outfit right now. She's got a flower on her stupid hat. Speaking of my sister, she wants you to learn a new song. I can't learn a new song. Kelsey will help you with it. What? Come on. Hey. I hate when movies do this. They always make someone learn a new song like five minutes before they go on stage. And then the performance is like flawless as though they've been rehearsing it for hours. You taught me to learn the words to a new song right before going on stage. I would be out there like, we're all in this together. Yeah, and we know who we are. We're all stars. And we see that. Hey, why'd you switch songs? Switch songs? What? Bolton. But I didn't learn a new song. Exactly. Pushing Sharpay out of the show when she's the only one who really cares about it is kind of undercutting all the nice things you just said, Troy, but sure, go off. I guess it's not really under his control. It's just weird to me that Sharpay would lose the thing that she's been working for for this whole movie and then just be like, oh, and then be smiling and dancing in the next scene. It feels a little cheap, like they just kind of brushed through that, but okay, I get it. We only have 10 minutes left in the movie and two songs to hit. It's a tough time, but Troy still doesn't know what's up. He gets surprised once he's on stage and starts singing. He's like, how did you guys turn Gabriella invisible? Basically, when Gabriella comes out on stage, that means that they're forgiving each other, or Gabriella forgives him. I don't know why or how, he certainly didn't really apologize for being a jerk or basically going around and caring about Sharpay and college and money more than her. She just sort of gets over it on her own and we don't see that. I would have loved if they could have given us some little song of Gabriella's when she's like broken up with Troy or if they could have even pushed this love triangle thing with Ryan a little further, like give me one more scene of them being emotional together and, and Ryan being like, hey, you and Troy together, no one makes more beautiful music. Go get him. That way we know like, oh, she she is really into Troy and it was all just like confusion. That's a good line actually. Hey, go make that beautiful music, girl. <laughs> I love this song, by the way. Every day of my life. Ooh, 
can someone grab a banana for Ryan, please? Because he is shaking in a way that says, I need electrolytes. Every day, every day. Love this song. I love when a big crowd is singing and then it's just clapping, like in Sister Act. After the big number, of course, Gabriella and Troy get to finally share their first kiss. First time ever kissing. Aw, sometimes summer miracles are just the lantern centerpiece from the dinner scene tied to a string. And that's okay, every dream is different. The last scene takes place at the Lava Springs cat crew party, cast only crew pool party. And it's all for one, baby. There are those stronger arms that I love so much as made popular by the show Glee. Everybody all for one. summer has just begun. We can rock and roll and just let go to the rhythm of the drum. Something like that. Now we're gonna have fun in the sun now that all the hard work, work is done. You guys, throughout this whole movie actually, the fans of High School Musical were able to vote on Disney Channel's website for certain things that would appear in the movie. They got to pick what was drawn on the blackboard at the beginning scene. They got to choose what kind of sandwiches Troy made for Gabriella. They went with peanut butter jelly. And they also got to choose which other Disney Channel star appeared in the final scene. Here's who that is. I'm so into this. Miley Cyrus, y'all. She's like, I'm getting paid 10 grand for this. Also, of course it was gonna be Miley Cyrus. She was legitimately the biggest star of the Disney Channel at this time. And I feel like the other people you could vote for were like the best friend from That's So Raven. <laughs> Girl, they are not paying you enough to try and stay in character while drowning. You want to live to see those residual checks, honey. Take a deep breath of air. What do you guys think of High School Musical 2? Do you feel stronger than ever now that we're in it together? Let me know in the comments below. Give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more clip breakdowns like this. I think we gotta do High School Musical 3, obviously. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right down here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on those notifications and you'll always be the first to know it's time for some fun in the sun. Check out the merch below. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you for working all summer with me. I will see you next time.